Welcome to another video demonstrating how to set up a Windows network. In the previous video we installed Windows 2003 server and configured it to be a domain controller. Uh, the, previous, um, the previous video and uh, ended up eventually having um, this server being a domain controller. Okay, now just to remind everyone that a domain controller allows access to resources on the domain or network. It holds uh, centralized user accounts and security policies and obviously can be used as a file server and a print server as well. Okay, today we'll be adding clients to our network and I'm going to de demonstrate using three different Windows client operating systems. Uh, the first one we'll be using is Windows 2000 Professional, the one I'm actually sitting on now. Uh, we'll also look at XP Pro and Vista Business as well. Okay, so to start with, um, I've, this is a fresh install of Windows 2000 Professional. I've uh, configured the network card, I've given it an appropriate IP address, so we're ready to start. Um, I'm going to click on Start, and you can see here that uh, I'm actually logged in as the administrator. Uh, I'm also going to go to my computer and right click and go down to Properties, and within System Properties I'm going to go to the second tab, the Network Identification tab, and here you can see the full computer name. Now this is the name we gave it when we actually installed the operating system, and the computer is just called Win2000. It's also got a work group, uh, and the work group name is Work Group. This was also set up when we installed it. Now just to remind everyone that a work group is a peer-to-peer -peer network, so it's a network um, where each computer on the network can uh, share resources but none of them is centralized it's not a client server network now what we're actually going to be doing today is, is turning this from a uh, computer on a peer-to-peer -peer network into being a client on a client server network where the server is the one that we previously set up the domain controller from the last video okay I'm gonna hit cancel there now before we start I think it's very important to make sure that we are actually connected to the network that everything's working fine because if it's not then uh, from this point onwards things can go wrong so uh, what I'm going to do is just go start, run, um, and go to the command prompt. So CMD, uh, click OK, and we get the command prompt. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ping the server uh, and the server's IP address. Now um, the ping command uh, is simple, ping, and then I just stick in the IP address of the server. and um, now if we can have a look here it actually says um, destination host unreachable so something's wrong with um, our connection um, so I'm just going to do another command now the next command is uh, IP config it's all one word IP config uh, and it can actually it actually tells us uh, usually it would tell us what IP address we have but it actually says media state cable disconnected now I actually did that um, earlier so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the cable and um, plug it back in okay and uh, I'm going to do IP config again there we go um, and it's connected still it hasn't got an IP address uh, usually takes a few moments to, to do that I'll type in IP config again there we are we've got the IP address so it's actually going to work now I'm going to ping the server again to see if it works Okay, and now it says reply from, and it's the IP address of the server. So we now know that we have a connection, a direct connection between our computer, this client computer, and the server computer, the domain controller. Uh, so it means that there's a connection through the wires, through whatever hardware we've got um, between, and the networking hardware, so whether it's a switch, a hub, maybe some routers, uh, we know that it's actually connected. Now that's very important from a networking point of view, and in fact any sort of problems, anything you do on the network, it's always a good idea to uh, to, to ping uh, just to see if you are actually connected. Um, so it's usually a first step. Now I'm going to exit that, we don't need the command prompt anymore, and uh, we can actually uh, get doing what we're actually meant to be doing, which is turning this uh, computer, this client computer, and actually joining it to the domain. Now it's uh, relatively easy, we just go back to my computer, right click and go to properties, and go to network identification, uh, and uh, this is where we were before, 
and you can see at the bottom here it says to rename this computer or join a domain click properties so we just click this button here properties and it's got the computer name which is fine uh, we don't want to change that um, but it's this box at the bottom here that we're interested in it says a member of uh, at the top it says domain at the bottom here is workgroup now we're already a member of this workgroup called workgroup we actually want to be a member of a domain um, so I'm going to click domain and I'm going to click the name of the d type the name of the domain in there now the domain that we created on the previous video was LRC so I'm going to type LRC and click OK um, now what it wants to do is it wants to have a name and a password um, of an account that allows us to join the name the the domain so the administrator's password and I'll click OK and it's going to think about it. It's actually going to try and contact the domain and it's going to try and work out that is that username and that password do they have sufficient privileges to allow us to join a computer to the domain. And it might take a while. Okay, and we've just got this pop-up box that says, uh, Welcome to the LRC domain. Uh, so I'll click on OK. Okay, and it says, You must reboot this computer for the changes to take effect. So, um, I'm going to reboot the computer. And we're back again the computer restarted and we logged in as the administrator again and you can see uh, it doesn't look any different but let's go to my computer over here right click and go down to properties and go to network identification which is the second tab of the systems properties box and you can see it says now full computer name win2000 domain lrc.local that is the name of the domain that we set up previously on the previous video uh, of the domain controller. Okay, so we are actually we have naturally made um, this client Windows 2000 Professional is now a client of the network. So uh, we can actually manage user accounts, uh, login, usernames uh, centrally from the domain controller. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, teleport from uh, Windows 2000 Professional over to the next operating system. Uh, so I'll see you there in a flash.